The opening chapters of the Bible are the seedbed for the truth found throughout the rest of Scripture. As we study the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we will discover principles that can guide us as we seek to have a new beginning with God. Are you in need of a spiritual reset? Good news. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Let's join Scott Pauley now. When you read the lives of great men and women in history, one of the temptations is to give attention only to their famous days, the days where they did something really grand or something was extremely well known about them. But have you ever pondered all of the unnamed days, the unknown times in life? Uh, for example, we, we want to talk about King David. And uh, we immediately go to the Valley of Allah and see him felling the giant or uh, many years later, sitting up on the throne of Israel. Great days. But do you ever think about all the days he sat alone with a slingshot and a harp uh, somewhere uh, out in the field with a bunch of dirty sheep? Think about those days, the in-between times of life. Uh, we talk about the great apostle Paul, all of his preaching and all of his writing and all of his work for the Lord. But have you ever pondered all of the days that he basically did nothing but walk by foot from one town to the next, or all of the days he spent on board a ship. Uh, he wrote no scripture. He preached no sermon. He did nothing that would seem remarkable to us. Was that a part of the will of God? Was that a part of what God was doing in and through his life? Absolutely. The Lord is working in the in-between times of life. And yet those in-between times, those uh, parenthesis moments in life sometimes can be very dangerous because if you're not careful, you start taking matters into your own hand. You start trying to figure it out and fix it. I want you to know those are times to be still and know that God is God. We've come to the closing verses of Genesis 7, and frankly, I would say the most unremarkable part of the story uh, because the, the ark has been built, the floodwaters have come, uh, Noah and his family are inside the boat. They're not yet coming off of that great boat uh, into the new world to their inheritance. Uh, what are they doing? They're living through the in-between times of life. The Bible says, beginning in verse number 17, And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. You ever feel overwhelmed? Well, the world was overwhelmed. Uh, if, if Noah had allowed his life to ride the same tide that the floodwaters were, uh, if he had allowed his, his faith to rest upon uh, the circumstances around him, he would have been a great mess, but he doesn't. He, he's walking by faith and not by sight. In fact, the very fact the mountains were covered, he can see nothing but water. If he looks out the window, all he can see is rain and water and destruction and people perishing. Someone said, that must have been awful. Yes, but his eyes were on the Lord. He's, he's literally walking by faith and not by sight. Verse 21 and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died, and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Now, if Noah's hope had been men, uh, humankind, uh, other created beings, well, he's, he's in trouble. But it's not. He's not looking to men to save him. He's looking to the Lord. And the in-between times of life, it's easy sometimes to try to find somebody that you can, you can lean on. That's very dangerous. God sometimes will remove all the crutches, all the props, so you'll learn to lean on him alone. So here's a man with every certain thing gone, every other person gone. What's he left with, God? And God's enough. 
And I want to say to you, dear listener today, God's enough for you. You're living through the in-between time of life. Uh, familiar things are gone. Familiar people are gone. Uh, all that you've, you've leaned on and trusted in perhaps has been stripped away, but you still have God, don't you? And here's the good word. God has you. The last verse of Genesis chapter 7 says this, And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Now the waters increased, and the waters prevailed, and the waters overcame, but they didn't overcome Noah and his family and his faith in God because God was greater than all of that. God is greater than the highest mountain. God is greater than the deepest flood. God is greater than the worst storm, and you can trust the Lord in the in-between times of life. We very often talk about the 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I would challenge you, study Scripture, because in the Bible, the number 40 is always connected to seasons of testing or trial, God proving and purging. 40 is very significant. Uh, For example, you remember Moses, uh, 40 years on the backside of the desert. And then, what does Moses have to do with the children of Israel? They march through that wilderness for those 40 years. Think about all God did in periods of 40. Uh, See our Lord Jesus going through his wilderness temptation. He's out there. How long? 40 days and 40 nights. So you have this number 40 in Scripture always connected to to testing and to trial. You're going to have your test, and you're going to have your trial. There are going to be moments where God proves you, where the lights go out, where you don't feel it, where you're not certain about many things. What is it? It's the in-between time of life. It's the parenthesis. It's not going to last forever. And what you've got to do is just stay close to God. Stay true to the Lord. Stay in faith. Stay in obedience. And that will help you to stay where you need to be in the in-between time. Now, this is very important because we concentrate on the 40 days, the 40 nights, like that was the whole thing, but it wasn't. See, you can't predict God's timetable, and you can't control it either. God is never early and never late. His ways and thoughts are higher than our ways and thoughts. He's always right. When you come to verse number 24, the Bible says, not only uh, did the rain come for 40 days and 40 nights, but the waters prevailed for 150 days. Let that sink in just a moment because we're talking about more than just a little over a month. We're talking about months of nothing but water, months with no land, months uh, with no, no sure footing for their feet. Maybe that's where you feel like you are right now. Now, The whole world perhaps uh, seems to be unsteady to you at this moment. And you say, how long, Lord, how long? Uh, I would point out to you that Noah knew what God was doing, but he did not know how long it would take. See, God's timetable is not ours. The eternal God doesn't work on our calendar and by our clock. So stop measuring that way and instead keep your eyes on the Lord. In my experience, the in-between times of life can be very dangerous because those are times where people very often take matters into their own hands. And friend, you don't want the matters in your hands. You want them in God's hands. Keep them there. But I've also learned by experience that the in-between times of life can be some of the most fruitful times. Recently, I sat down and read through some old journals uh, from a season of my life where God unsettled everything and uh, made some big changes in my life and direction. And they were unsettling times, but they were some of the greatest times of my walk with Jesus. I learned so much about him through that. The word of God opened to me. Prayer became so real. Faith became so personal. I'm telling you, the in-between times of life are absolutely necessary for God's plan to be fulfilled, not just in this world, but in your life. God could have made it so the waters receded faster, but God's timing is always right. It was true in Noah's life. It will be true in your life. Trust and obey the Lord in the in-between times of life. No matter where you are or what you've done, you can have a new beginning with the Lord. A great way to experience this new beginning is to have a fresh start in your devotional life. We encourage you to get into God's Word. On our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find a wide variety of devotional plans from which to choose. We hope they're a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us today, and may God help you to enjoy the journey.